All right, let's pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for just being here, God, for being faithful in everything that you do. Lord, even in this time, God, I just pray that you just begin to move in an even more powerful way than you did when we were in worship, God. Just like, just like this past weekend, God, that we're still in a position of worship, that we're moving forward, it's still in this seated position with you, God, seated in heavenly places, moving forward towards the gift of sonship, towards the gift of being a child, God. Well, Lord, we love you. I just pray that your word would just go forth with power and authority. That it would reach the hardest hearts, Lord, and turn it to flesh. Jesus, thank you for what you're doing. We love you. And everybody said it. Amen. Oh. We're taking up the offering. <laughs> so we take up the offering for a few reasons. But one of my favorite reasons why we take up an offering here and in any ministry is just to sow into it and to bless it. And so an offering is a way of saying thank you. And it, it helps us fund this place so that you guys can keep coming every single Saturday and that we can be here. And even more than that, the Lord, the Lord cherishes that. And, and Jacob said it this weekend, you know, when when you are in that in, in a position of a child, you don't you don't toil in giving a tithe. It's a joy to give a tithe because you're giving back to God what God gave to you, and you're setting apart a piece of it. And you're saying, Lord, have this. I'm setting this apart for you. And so that's why we that's why we take up an offering, and that's why we just took up that offering. So thank you for everyone that this gave, and for everyone that will give in the future. God bless you. Okay, so, I'll introduce myself. My name is Hudson, Hudson Chow. Hi, hi everybody. And I have been involved with the warehouse for, I guess three years now. Two years, two and a half years in leadership. And I am in charge of overseeing the men's ministry here. And I pour into the guys, make sure they're equipped and fed and also that they're having fun and experiencing community and have a home to come to. So we just had a conference, a men's conference, over the past of tip last night and today. And I want to talk a little bit about, I'll talk a little bit about what the Lord did during the sessions, but I want to spend this time touching a little bit on what the Lord did inside of me during these sessions. And so I guess you can sort of tile it like inside the life of Hudson or <laughs> if you want to. If you're looking for a fancy title, that's it. Like it's pretty good. That's the best I could come up with in like 13 hours, so cut me some slack. Um where do I start? So let's turn to the Psalms. Chapter 92. Psalms 92, and we'll start with verse 1. Psalms 92. Alright, so this is what it says. So Psalms 92, we'll start at verse 1, and we're just going to read five verses. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. And to sing praises in your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning, and your faithfulness every night. On an instrument of ten strings, on a lute, and on a harp. With harmonious sound, for you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in your work of your hands. O Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. So I'll sort of, this is kind of a journey, I guess, and it leads up to somewhat of a destination. But really, in sort of starting with this, in verse 5, there's a word in there that says, it says in verse 5, your thoughts are very deep. And so thoughts in this passage is actually, the Hebrew word is mahashaba. I think I did a pretty good job pronouncing that, but... Mahashava. And so what this word means is actually, there's two meanings to it. It's a bad plan 
or a good plan. And so in, in that, uh, there's, the, the Lord is, was kind of speaking to me over the weekend, sort of some of the things that I was dealing with. And throughout the course of the three sessions that we went through, we saw a repetition of all three of the speakers speaking somewhat of a, a similar message. And it wasn't by coincidence. And we didn't like compare notes before you know, we spoke. But we all just shared our hearts. And that was the thing that the Lord was doing. And even during the sessions, I found myself wrestling in, in, in a way that Jacob put it best. It's sort of like spiritually frustrated. Like after the session, just kind of like, man, what, you know, what is it? Like this is, this is what you did inside of me, Lord. And I just poured it out to these people. But what is it inside of me that I'm still, still grappling with and struggling with? And so I, I was still hearing from the Lord. I was hearing him speak. But at the same time, there was this sense of almost like, what am I missing? You know, like following the Lord and then almost at the same time feeling like I'm hitting a brick wall. And just really just trying to, just sitting there worshiping. And I'm just like, you know, sitting there worshiping, you know, doing my thing, rocking back and forth, raising my hands, and I'm just standing there, I'm just like struggling, and I'm frustrated, and I'm just like, what's going on? Because I'm, I'm walking in the direction that the Lord's calling me to go, but at the same time, I'm feeling this, this sense of, what am I missing? What is it that it almost feel like I missed the mark? And Jacob summed up all this in the best way that I could I could come up with, but like just feeling that sense of where almost like not feeling like a Christian. You know, like you know you're following Jesus, but you feel like you're missing something. You know, you know he's called you, you know that you're following him, and then you just hit that hard spot and you're just like, oh. Like, I just want to bang my head up against the wall. Like, I, in fact, the wall I'm hitting up against, maybe if I bang my head up against it hard enough, the wall will break and I can get through. <laughs> like, having this frustrating moment, it's like, banging up against this wall, it's like, Lord, what is happening inside of me? And so I'm, I'm sitting there and sort of thinking about some of the sessions that had happened over the weekend, some of the things that have happened, uh, even in the, the course of this past season. And a few of the guys heard, you know, what the Lord had been doing in my life since this past December. And that one word could be wrapped up simply in the spirit of sonship. And so I shared that and I was just like, yeah, I know. You know, I, I know this is what you call me to do, but why do I feel the way that I feel right now? And so I, I began to think back on some of the things that the Lord had spoken to me in the season that I've been in. And there had been a book that I was reading by Watchman Nee titled Sit, uh, Sit, Sit, Walk, and Sit, Walk, Stand. Um, and in this book, it literally changed my life. Like, it just like, in dealing with that frustrating season, but even more than that, like, seeking the Lord, just like, seeking the Lord for that, just like, Lord, look, what is it that lives inside of me that desires to see me go forward and not be spiritually frustrated after a service? Because I know that I'm worshiping the Lord with all my heart, but then that thing dwells inside of me that says, what is it that is beyond this? And... Really, in that, it's taking, just like Watchman Nee describes the best, it's, it's that attitude and position of rest. And in that position of rest, a lot of us think, like, you know, let's sit down, let's not do anything, let's take a nap. Praise God, that's what, that's what I feel like doing right now, I'm so tired. But like, that's what we think of, like, and these guys are late too, you know, like, we're tired, we think that resting is, simply laying down on a bed and sleeping. That's what I think of rest. Like when I think of rest, when I think of when God created the earth and on the seventh day there was rest, I think of God not doing anything, but 
but even when God's not doing anything, he's doing something. And so Watchman Nee sets up this idea of, of rest and how when God created the earth, he created it in six days. And we all know the story, first day, second day, third day. And then on the seventh day, or the sixth day, he creates man. So on the sixth day, God creates man, and on the seventh, he rests. And so this idea is that the six days that God worked, Adam entered into God's rest on the seventh. So there was no work involved for Adam. He simply entered into the work that God had already done. And he was resting. So God's, God's last day was man's first day. And that, this will mess with you. Like, it will mess with your head. Um, and so Adam, Adam was meant to, and we've gone over this, and I know, like, a lot of the guys have heard this, but we're just like, this is just like what the Lord wants to do. Like, we've heard the word momentum, or I've heard the word momentum all weekend. Like, we've had visions uh, from David about, the, like, the Lord's presence coming down like fire and the room turning to gold. Like, we just want to nail this in. Because this is what Paul writes about in the New Testament. It's wrapped around this one idea. And so Adam was meant to live in this place of rest. Okay? God creates him to enter in on the seventh day to this place of rest. But in the same time, Adam didn't delight in God. It says that he walked with God. But in a, in a way, it almost seems like Adam is working so much in the garden. That at the same time, you're like, did he actually delight in being with God? Because a delight in God essentially leads to this. It leads to a desire to want to be with him more. And Adam, so Adam is, is in the garden. He's working, he's working. Temptation comes. He takes the fruit. He's cast out of the garden. And then it says that after that, that Adam tilled and toiled the ground to produce fruit. And then sometimes that ground wouldn't even produce the fruit that he tilled. And so, Adam, Adam was condemned to a curse. Okay, so when we live in the attitude and the mindset of Adam, forgetting the place of rest that we came from, we're actually, we're living in a place that is condemned to a curse. Okay, but if we live in Christ, we rest as sons in the finished works of the cross. Okay, so everything that Jesus did led up to this one point on the cross where he was crucified. And as Christians, this is the place that we rest on. It's the fact that he did all the work so that we can enter into rest. And so like I said, th this was me, you know, knowing, like I have these thoughts. I know, I know what the word says. I know that I'm supposed to be resting in the word, so I'm just... Up here, we're just like, okay, rest. Okay, like we got it. Maybe if I, maybe if I rock enough, <laughs> the presence of the Lord will will shift my heart. Just like, okay, we'll do some some hand raising here. Go back to rocking. Okay. Maybe wave my hands a little bit. And and I didn't feel anything. It didn't change where I was. Just because I was doing something different, like rocking back, it didn't change anything. And so the frustration was still there, but I realized that that frustration was actually, actually coming from a place of my inability to sit and rest in what Christ has actually done for me. Okay, so, so during the conference, and I stood up and I talked about this, the, the, the fact that I, and, you know, at the age of, you know, many of you have heard my testimony. At the age of 12, how I was introduced to pornography and how it led to depression, sexual morality with other girls, and uh, a, a pill addiction. And so I'm, I'm like, I'm up there preaching, and I'm saying, you're preaching, preaching out to the guys, you're a son, you're love, all these things, like rest in the works of the cross, and, and all this stuff. And I'm throwing out all these ideas, and then I come to the realization that I'm hosting this conference, and I'm actually preaching to myself. <laughs> and like, I, my heart was so stirred for what the Lord wanted to do inside of them, 
that I missed the fact that that word was beginning to stir even more powerfully in my heart. And it's so easy to just start throwing, throwing out these theological ideas and the way that God thinks about us, but then we forget the fact that when we do something, like a conference, and it doesn't turn out the way that we think it's supposed to, that doesn't affect the way that God views us. And so, like, so right back, right, right, right back around to the idea of what, what Paul's trying to lay out in the New Testament, and it's this idea, and we see it in, in Galatians 4, we went over the Galatians 4, Romans 6, and Ephesians 1. Every single one of them, Paul's laying aside this idea that we're adopted as sons, that we're adopted as the children of God. And so this, so Paul, and, and I just realized this, but Paul is trying to wrap this one idea around our head because if we can just begin to grasp the knowledge that God wants to view us as children and not slaves, we can walk in the freedom that he purchased with his life. And that freedom for me, I, I struggle with it. I, I, I struggle with it this weekend, even as the conference was going on. I'm like, okay, it's not shit. Got it. You know, Scott's speaking on the same thing. Such a got it. I'm just like, okay, I've got the word now. You know, hold on to the word. I'm just like, I've got it. You know, Lord, do your work now. I'm just like, come on. I'm just like waiting for it. <laughs> and like Jacob put it best. I'm just, I've kind of, and as, as he was speaking, like he's convicting me because all the things that he's talking about, I was doing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like, he said it like this. You know, the Holy Spirit's already inside of us. And we'll go to our prayer closet and we'll be like, you know, uh, it, it, says, it says in John that whatever you ask for, this I will do for you. Whatever you ask for in my name, this I will do for you. And so we like go to our prayer closet, we like shut the door, and he's like, what, what is it that you want, son? We're just like, God, I want more of you. Like, Send me a present. And then the Holy Spirit just like comes right up to me. He's like, I'm already here. <laughs> it's like, oh, I missed it. And so he's up there preaching about all these things. And I'm sitting there in this chair and realizing that this word that I had just preached, I had somewhat of a nugget of revelation from it, but the rest of it is still to come. And so as a son, as a daughter, there, there is no struggle to see, to till the ground, to work for fruit, to toil, and, and, to, and to think that your works will get you closer to God. Because it's so easy, even for me during the conference, thinking, Lord, like I've invested time, even invested my own money, like invested time in pouring into people, like Lord, you, you have to show up in my expectation and the box that you did last year and just show yourself in a new way and show yourself even more powerfully than last year. And we even got a word uh, from Scott before pre-service, we were in pre-service prayer and Scott said that the Lord was telling him that the guys here came to get set, or we had the expectation, the guys had the expectation that they came to get set free from something, but the Lord was actually revealing something different to them and releasing them into something else. And the, the picture that he used was the beggar by the gate of beautiful and how when uh, Peter comes up to him, you know, he says, uh, what is it you want? He was expecting silver and gold and he receives the spirit of God instead of the ability to walk. And so that whole world, that whole word was wrapped around this idea that our expectations sometimes don't fall under the lines and the will of what the Father is doing. Because even, even when Adam was in the garden and, and he bit the fruit, he said, God, it's my will. Let my will be done. But when Jesus entered into the garden in the New Testament, he said, Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. And so... The works mentality at the end of the day leads you to how can I fix myself? But the son and daughter mentality at the end of the day leads you to Lord, fix me in the place that I'm in. 
And so I'm having this explosion of revelation. And I even, I like, Abby like joked around about it. She's like, just, just get up here tonight and cry. <laughs> I was like, I can do it. Like, I've done it before. <laughs> and so I wind up leaving and I just left for a little while, and on the drive back, I'm just like, overwhelmed, just like completely overwhelmed, and like I, I wind up crying in the car instead of up here, so sorry you didn't get to see that. So I wind up crying in the car on the car right here, and I'm just completely overwhelmed by the fact that even though I thought that certain aspects of the conference were a failure, that God still affirmed me, not because of the work that I had done, but because of the work that Jesus did on the cross. And so the will that he was leading me into was not anything that I was doing. Like God placed a dream inside of me, but at the end of the day, it's still his will. Okay, so I'm operating in his will, seeing this become a reality, and in that, he calls me beloved, not because of what I'm doing, but just because he loves me. 